Gentlemen, Mammoth's Pictures is faced with a very serious situation. The New York Bank, who are the majority of stockholders in this corporation, are very incensed over our recent great losses of money. And they have sent us a man, an expert in the field of motion pictures, who will analyze our problem and possibly, we hope, come up with some happy solutions. Gentlemen, oh, wonderful. I have yes. said it before and I will say it again. I am the executive producer of Mama Pictures, and nobody from a New York bank is going to come and tell me how to make motion pictures. Just oh, a moment, you. just a moment, J.B. You may very well be the executive producer here, but the New York bank happens to own this studio, lock, stock, and barrel, and they are 100% behind this man. Now, I tell you, gentlemen, he probably holds our jobs, our entire futures in his very hands, and I think because of this, we should listen to what he has to say. Furthermore, gentlemen, I'm happy to inform you that I've been told that he is a brilliant and excellent movie producer in his own right from Vienna. Sure. Excuse me a moment, gentlemen. Yeah. Hello? Yes? He is. Send him in. Gentlemen, he's here. Gentlemen, I present Professor Ludwig von Kleinmacher. <laughs> Gentlemen, be seated, please. What is your name? John Baxter. John Baxter, you're fired! <laughs> Everybody here is fired! I cleaned the house from the beginning! That's like, all! Professor, I'd like to register a protest. This is preposterous. You can't fire us all. I like you. I like you because you got spunk there, Kit. Your name is Spunky. You are loaded with spunk. <laughs> I like you, Spunky. You're hired. And everybody else is hired. All, all hired back. All right, now we got a staff. Let's go to work. All right, let's go. Yes. Professor, as head of the organization, I should like to welcome you. Would you care for a cigar? Oh, thank you very much. Huh? <laughs> there you go, Spunky. <laughs> My wife is a chain smoker. <laughs> Did you open that please? Hold it. Just put them in there. I take the box home for the kiddies. <laughs> all right. What can I do for all of you gentlemen? Yes. Well, Professor, I understand that you've spent the entire last week in our viewing rooms uh, seeing our recent pictures. Now, what do you think can help us? A miracle. That's all. <laughs> That's the only thing that can help this study is a miracle. You are not going to make good pictures. Professor, you're going to make better pictures. Professor, as motion picture editor and executive of this motion picture firm, I say it is impossible, impossible to make better pictures than we've been making. Funky? <laughs> now, Funky, I never want to hear those two words again. You hear? Never do I want to hear those two words again. What two words? Impossible. <laughs> I don't want to hear that around this studio anymore. There's no such a word as impossible. What would you think if they, if they told Louis Pasteur when he invented the aeroplane? <laughs> and Louis Pasteur invented the aeroplane, they said impossible, right? But that uh, didn't deter him. He went ahead and the Louis Pasteur invented the aeroplane. And it's because of Louis Pasteur that we are all flying today. Because Louis Pasteur invented the aeroplane. Professor von Kleinmacher. Louis Pasteur did not invent the aeroplane. Louis Pasteur found a cure for rabies. And he found a way of taking the germ properties out of milk. And for your information, that process is called pasteurization. <laughs> Bunky, you just blew the Christmas bonus. <laughs> Like the big house in Beverly Hills with the big cigars, that's eh, funky. You like all these things, yeah? Oh, you mean Louis Pasteur, the fellow who invented the airplane? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas. That's it. <laughs> all right. Now, Louis Pasteur invented the airplane, right? That's <laughs> right. Now, we take up the matters at hand here. Now, what we got to do, they're making pictures all over the world. We're going to make a picture of New York. But a picture of New York in our back lot. We build a, a regular city of New York in the back lot and we make it a musical. And we get the greatest, greatest composer there is. We get Beethoven. Now you call up his agent. You call up Beethoven's agent and you tell the president. Uh, Beethoven. 
Beethoven is dead. <laughs> Beethoven? Dead? Ludwig is gone? <laughs> this is a shock. <laughs> you that you don't pick up a paper a couple of days, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> You can't get Beethoven. Call up Mozart. You get Mozart, call his agent. You get a side of agent. Professor, Mozart is dead. <laughs> Bruce Gunn gone? <laughs> Bruce, Mozart, I'm sick of him. I was so close with him. What, was it an accident? They were both in the same bus or something? <laughs> Beethoven and Mozart for flunked. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what you do. You get Tchaikovsky. There he is. Tchaikovsky is dead. That's why I got you, Spunky. I just made that name up. There is no such thing. Tell you what we got here. I wasn't been fooling around. I have been writing a script, and I brought a script to be scripted and write. Now, here's a script that we're going to do. It took me four years' work, and it's beautiful. Now, I'll tell you what we have to do. All it is, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in German. I wrote it in German, but we can translate it. It's called Vergangen mit der Wind. Now, Professor, Professor, how would one translate the Vergangen mit der Wind? Vergangen mit der Wind? Oh, I don't know. Away with the wind. So long to the wind. Goodbye to the wind. Perhaps gone with the wind? Funky, you did it again. That's it. They call it gone with the wind. Now, we get a pass at the red bottle of Unsar Gate. Professor, I want to pay the end. Professor, I'm very sorry to inform you of this, but gone with the wind has already been done quite successfully. Been done? <laughs> David O. Selznick produced it. Who? David O. Selznick. An Irishman produced a German picture? <laughs> I never heard. Wait a minute, I just want to ask you one question. In his story, how does it end? Does the North win or does the South? The North. Took my ending. How did I get it? <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it's quite clear. It's quite clear we cannot make better pictures. We cannot make better pictures than they're making today. But what we can do to make money, we can make rotten pictures, right? <laughs> now, I show you how, and there's a market for them. In late television, there's a market for rotten television pictures. When I got an idea for a rotten picture, that's going to be a smash hit. Now, I'll tell you what we do. You call me.